So each of these must be equal to zero separately. We know of course that R is equal to Li hat plus Mj hat plus zero K hat. This is something we saw in video number two, where we say R is the more general vector field having both an I and a J hat component. Dr is of course dx i hat plus dy j hat plus dz k hat. Let's first look at the integral, the closed surface, excuse me, the closed line integral of l dx plus m dy. This can easily be rewritten as a dot product of l i hat plus m j hat with dr. And that's because of course k hat dot zero is equal to zero. So we can have the, the you could you could easily have uh, you could have lm you might have nk hat here if you wanted where n is equal to zero. Now I'm not going to derive Stokes theorem. If it's something you're familiar with, well then that's great. And if it's not, you can look at video number two for a derivation of Green's theorem. But I've written Stokes theorem at the bottom of your screen. Stokes theorem allows us to go from a closed line integral to a surface integral, or we go to a surface integral but involves the curl of a vector field. Now, I don't want to get too uh, bogged down in the vector calculus. You can check my section, video section on vector calculus for electromagnetism if you would like to know more. So here what we have is R is equal to L i hat plus M j hat and DL is, well, DR. You can see video number 32 in my series of videos on vector calculus for electromagnetism for more about Stokes' theorem. Note that the curve C is in the xy plane and that dA is the vector area. So dA, we'll say the scalar dA is just the, is just the area. The vector dA is the scalar area but with a direction perpendicular to the, uh, the surface of the, the area. So say for example, if, if you had the scalar area dA here, it would be equal to dx dy, but the vector area is going to be equal to dx dy k hat. Now, in order to employ or invoke Stokes theorem, we need to do the curl. We need to take the curl of the vector field R. So let's go ahead and do that. This is most easily done through matrices where you take the determinant of the 3 by 3 matrix written in the center of your screen. So I've rewritten Stokes theorem here and this is the curl of our uh, this is the curl of our vector field R here or this is about also about to compute the curl and I've written the curl of the vector field here. I don't want to get bogged down in the algebra it's something I'm sure you can you can compute yourself. The point to note here is that we're taking the curl and then we're taking the dot product of that with the vector area. But the vector area dA is equal to dx dy k hat. So putting it all together, the dot product is going to give us 0 plus 0 plus del, e, del r sub y del x minus del r sub x del y dx dy. That, of course, is because we're taking the dot product with something which is only in the k-hat direction, which kills the i-hat and j-hat components. This should start to look quite familiar. This means if we have an arbitrary vector field in two dimensions, which we call R, we take the closed line integral of that dl, that's equivalent to getting the surface integral or the double integral of del r sub y del x, minus del r sub x del y, integrated dx dy. That of course is equal to zero. In our previous nomenclature, r is equal to l i hat plus m j hat, or r sub x is equal to l, and r sub y is equal to m. But we need to remember that we started with two integrals, one involving the real components, and one involving the imaginary components. Thus far we've only worked on the real components L and M and that gave us this expression here. Of course something similar happens with the imaginary components 
L prime and M prime here. And what we've now gotten is Green's theorem, going from a closed line integral to a surface integral. That's all I've got to say about that. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. You might click out or check out universityphysicstutorials.com. Thank you for watching.